Hey guys, I am the 50s kid. I'm gonna do another E46 video for you. This one's gonna be on diagnosing engine problems using fuel trims. Now, um, in order to do this, you need to have some kind of a, a tool that'll let you see fuel trims, some kind of a scan tool that hooks to the OBD2 diagnostic port. I'm using an ELM327 interface um, that I got off of eBay from China for, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. Uh, you can buy a $100 version of this, but if it's got the ELM327 chipset, they're all the same, basically. So I'm using this interface with um, a software pro program called ScanMaster ELM that I purchased. Uh, but any scan tool that shows you fuel trims will, uh, will work. Engines like to burn fuel at an ideal ratio. This is called the stoichiometric ratio, and it's 14.7 parts of air to one part fuel. They use a mass airflow sensor to determine how much air is entering the system. That way they know how much fuel to deliver through the fuel injectors in order to burn that air at that ideal ratio. Engines also use an oxygen sensor at, in the exhaust. This is after the combustion process has completed. And that oxygen sensor is there to determine if the, the combustion process happened at that ideal ratio or not they can detect if there's too much air in the exhaust or not enough air in the exhaust. So if there's too much air in the exhaust, they know that more air got into the system than the mass airflow sensor was able to account for. So when they see that condition happening, the, en the engine then knows to, or the computer then knows to add fuel to the system in order to burn that extra air that's entering the system. And when it adds that fuel, that's called a fuel trim. So if you see a fuel trim of five, that means it's, it's adding 5% more fuel than it normally should be adding in order to achieve 14.7 to one ratio. A positive fuel trim is when the engine is running lean and the computer needed to add fuel in order to bring things back into balance. A negative fuel trim is when there was too much fuel getting in and the computer needed to remove fuel in order to bring things back into balance. There are three major causes for a positive fuel trim for a lean condition. Number one, there's a vacuum leak. That means there's too much air getting into the system. Number two, you have a dirty mass airflow sensor. Mass airflow sensor is not able to properly detect all of the air that is entering the system. It's under-reporting the amount of air. Number three, the fuel system is not delivering the amount of fuel that is being commanded of it. The most major cause of a negative fuel trim would be problems with the fuel system delivering too much fuel, possibly due to a leaking fuel injector and so, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at the problem I have by starting up the engine, starting up the program and seeing what the fuel trims tell us. Okay, as we can see here, I've got a P2098 post catalyst fuel trim system to lean. Now, uh, the most important thing to realize about this code is that it means that we, you know, the system is too lean. Okay. Now let's go ahead and look at the live data. I'm going to graph the short term on bank one, long term on bank one, short term bank two, long term bank two, engine RPM, and the fuel system status is just going to show me whether we're in closed loop or open, uh, closed loop or not. Looks like we are. I'm going to go ahead and zoom these in a little. So you can see that we've got positive fuel trim numbers here, eight, seven. That would correspond with the uh, trouble code that we got. The system is in fact too lean and it's adding fuel in order to maintain stoichiometric ratio. Quick word about the difference between short term and long term fuel trim. You can see here that we've got positive fuel trim numbers around 8% on each one. After a certain amount of time, the engine's gonna realize that, okay, we always need to be adding 8% of fuel trim or, or whatever it is because there's a problem that's not going away. So what's gonna happen is the 8% is gonna go over to the long-term fuel trim and then the short-term will reset itself. Short-term is what the engine is doing right now. The long-term is what the engine has learned to do over time. So when it, once the engine learns that that fuel trim is not going away, it's going to be adding long-term fuel trim of 8% from then on. This is going to reset to zero, and then it'll go up or down based on whatever immediate conditions happen to the engine at that point. 
By looking at the fuel trims, we've been able to determine that the engine is in fact running lean. But now we need to determine the cause of the lean condition. And remember, the three causes are a vacuum leak, a dirty mass airflow sensor, and an underperforming fuel system. We're gonna go through these possibilities one at a time. We're gonna start with a vacuum leak. Let's determine if we do in fact have a vacuum leak or not. So how do you do that? Well, quite simply, a vacuum leak is gonna be more pronounced at low RPMs at idle than it is at wide open throttle. This is because at wide open throttle, the vacuum is very low inside the engine because the engine is now consuming as much air as it possibly can. The throttle plate is open. There's that big open cavity where you know it's just sucking in as much air as it possibly can. So if there's a tiny vacuum hose that is broken somewhere, that the air that's entering in there is gonna be so minuscule compared to all the air that's entering in, the, in through the throttle plate. So what we need to do is turn the engine on. We're gonna run it at 2,500 RPMs and then also a little faster, maybe 3,000 RPMs. And we're gonna see if the fuel trims come down. If the fuel trims come down, that means we do in fact have a vacuum leak. If they go up, there's a different problem. So as you saw during the test, when I raised the RPM of the engine, the fuel trims did not drop. They pretty much stayed the same. In fact, they kind of they increased a little bit to 10% before dropping back down to around 8. And there was a brief dip here as we shifted speeds, but then you know pretty much the fuel trim went back to where it was, and the fuel trim didn't go to zero until I turned the engine off. That and that's where you see right there, RPM dropped to zero. Everything else dropped to zero. So this would mean that we have, that we do not have a vacuum leak. It's gotta be another problem. So how do we know if it's the mass airflow sensor? Well, first let's determine if the mass airflow sensor is even working. As you can see, I've changed this, this graph to read the airflow rate and it's reading about four grams a second. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the mass airflow sensor. And you can see that that dropped to zero. The engine stumbled a little bit and then it recovered is because the computer has reset to reading all the other sensors in order to determine how to run the, uh, the engine. You can see that the fuel trims are dropping really negative right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in. And it recovered. And we'll see the fuel trims return back to what they were. So we've determined that the mass airflow sensor is working, but how do we determine if it's dirty? Well, the best way I know of is to clean it. So I've removed the mass airflow sensor. I've just removed the whole air cleaner box as an assembly, left the mass airflow sensor attached to it. And that is it right there. The big wire is actually the heating element. And there are two smaller wires. There's one in the front here and then one in the back. You can see the back one for sure. Now they make a special mass airflow sensor cleaner that is 10 bucks. I'm just gonna spray it. Just let it dry. The solvents evaporate really quickly. So we're waiting for the engine to enter closed loop here. It looks like it has. Yeah, and it looks like that did not solve the problem. Still have positive fuel trim data. So at this point, let's tackle the third possibility. Let's, let's check out the fuel system. In order to check the fuel pressure, we need to hook up a fuel pressure gauge to the fuel rail, and I don't want to get sprayed with fuel when I do that, so we need to relieve the fuel pressure. One of the ways to do that is to remove the fuel pump fuse. So if you come in here to the glove box, your fuse box is in here. There are these, these two little white tabs on either side. Pull down, and you should have one of these little reference sheets here. And let's see here. Fuel pump, fuel pump, fuel pump is number 54. And we've got a little chart on the top here and it looks like 54 is on the bottom row, second from the left there. It's a 20 amp fuse. So if we're looking here, uh, it looks like this is the 20 amp fuse here. It looks like whatever's here is not there. So we need to use a little fuse puller tool here. I'll hook that on and pull that fuse. 
Now we run the engine until it dies. There we go. So as you can see, I've removed the microfilter housing and the fuel injector cover. If you need to know how to do that, you can check out my uh, common repair tasks video. But basically I needed to expose this Schrader valve on the end of the fuel rail. This is how you test the fuel pressure at that port. And you need a fuel pressure tester. And this is the one I got from Harbor Freight that will do the job. Because I read the directions, I am aware that I need to use some Teflon tape on all of the fittings, even though they have O-rings. So I'm doing that. You need to use the two long hoses here. This is the end that goes into the Schrader valve. And then you need this adapter hose to go into the pressure gauge. This end goes into the pressure gauge. little residual pressure, a little tiny bit of fuel came squirting out, but not a big deal. Making sure that's on there tight. Get this positioned in a way that you can see it. So I went ahead and repositioned that hose so that it doesn't get uh, caught up in the fan. All right. And I'm going to turn the ignition on, but not start the vehicle. Aha, now that is interesting. The fuel pressure should be 50 PSI when the engine's not running. It looks like it's around 40. Well, that's pretty telling right there. It's dropping too shouldn't drop. Let's go ahead and start the vehicle, see what happens. We are less than 50. And I believe it should be 45 PSI when it's running. All right, well, I believe we found our problem. The fuel pressure regulator is most likely bad. So one important question to answer at this point is, is it the fuel pump that's bad or is it the fuel pressure regulator that's bad? Now, <clears throat> I happen to know that my fuel pump was recently replaced um, because the owner told me that when I purchased the vehicle from him last year. So I, I'm pretty sure I can rule that out. Um, it, it still could possibly be that, uh, be a bad fuel pump. Maybe he you know, went with an aftermarket one and it's just going bad already. That's a, that's a possibility, but I don't think so. And, and the reason is that uh, once we turned the, the ignition off, we saw that the fuel pressure dropped and it's not supposed to do that. The fuel pressure regulator is supposed to hold the pressure at you know, 50 PSI so that you know, when you turn the engine on again, it'll fire right back up. So this is the reason that I'm, I'm leaning towards the fuel pressure regulator and the reason that I'm going to go ahead and replace the fuel pressure regulator um, in order to repair this problem. I'm going to go ahead and do that repair right now. Um, I will f I, I'm still going to film it. I will put the repair in a separate video, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to change the part and we're going to come back here, retest the pressure and see if that did fix the problem. Let's put the fuel pump fuse back in. Well, here we go, guys. As you can see, the fuel trims are now back to normal. Basically, anything below five is normal. You can see that's a, a much more normal uh, result. But one thing that's troubling me is my gauge is not reading. Well, actually, I suppose it is reading normal when the vehicle is running. Hey, result. Fuel trims are normal now. I will go ahead and reset the trouble codes we'll go take it for a test drive i'll put the panel back on below and uh and call this done success 
Okay guys, I wanted to demonstrate what it looks like when you have a vacuum leak. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the, uh, the tube that goes from the valve cover to the oil separator. Basically causing a vacuum leak. You can now hear that's a large vacuum leak. The engine's missing. You can see fuel trims are going up. They're gonna keep going up over 20. Once you get over 20, that's gonna cause a 171 and a 174. 171 on that bank, 174 on that bank. So I'm gonna go and raise the RPMs and let's see what happens. So there we go. I'm going to plug the tube back in, fix the vacuum leak. We'll come way down. Fuel trims are returning to normal. And there we go. So I didn't see what happened here. I was in the car. Let's go back to when we raised the RPM. Zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, and as we can see, fuel trims were real high and then boom, they dropped down. That's what you guys saw. Didn't drop down that much, but they did drop down. It's always, it's gonna vary depending on the severity of your vacuum leak. Obviously I caused a really huge vacuum leak. That's, that's, uh, Basically what would happen if uh, that lower hose, the oil return tube the, that goes from the bottom of the oil separator to the dipstick tube, if that cracks like it usually, that, uh, like it usually fails, this is what it's going to look like on fuel trims. You're going to see really high fuel trims because you've got a large vacuum leak. But if you've got a different kind of vacuum leak, like if there's a torn CV or if there's a torn air snorkel or something like that, and it's a, a much smaller vacuum leak, you, you know, it won't quite be that high. But it'll definitely be high. If you've got a 171 code, it's definitely going to be high. I believe those are only caused when the fuel trims go up above 20. And you should be noticing some, you may be noticing pro, um, some engine problems at that point, uh, engine performance problems, it, it, you know, just like you, you noticed when I did this just now. Well, we covered quite a lot about fuel trims today. I hope this video helps you to diagnose whatever problem you're having. And uh, good luck with it. And thanks for watching.